Okay, we're live. Good afternoon, everybody. Sunday afternoon, uh, testing a new format of Tea with Gary V. I'm your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. This is like water with Gary V on a Sunday afternoon. Pretty excited. Um, got some questions lined up from the audience. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter Live right now, please leave comments. Let me know what you think of this format and how it's coming across to you. And uh, and comments about the show itself and what you like. A big shout out. Hope everybody's families are healthy and secure. Hope everybody is starting to process and get settled into a new reality. Hope everybody is starting to find their way uh, and see their opportunities and be grateful and humble. And let's get into the show. All right, Dustin, I'm ready for my first question. Looking forward to it. And here we go. Hi. You're no audio. Can't hear you. Yep. Dust, make sure you prep people on audio. Nope. Okay. I'll keep yapping. Uh, so everybody, let's see what's going on on Twitter. If you don't know this, a little fun fact about me, Twitter is absolutely the place, besides 212-931-5731, Twitter's by far the place where you get the most responses from me. Hello? Nope. Um, and it is uh, no question um, this is why we're doing a little test run on Sunday afternoon, little impromptu test run, new format. Um, and so uh, I'm excited that uh, that we're getting through some of these glitches right now. Oh, shit. <laughs> How are you? Yo, what's up, Gary? How are you? Wow, what's your name? Leslie. Leslie it's such a pleasure. Awesome. So <laughs> my question to you is, how do you stay in your lane when you want to try different things that you don't necessarily have enough knowledge on it? Like, what would you talk about on all different platforms? The, the process. You know, okay. people think expert is the only way to go. And I, yeah. and I think documenting the journey to becoming expert is actually potentially more fascinating. I think, oh yeah. More important. I think 22 year old me, 24 year old me of like learning wine and learning marketing in the trend mm. would have been fascinating content. So when you say document the journey of becoming, cause I've, I heard you say that in one of the other videos. About, yeah, let's talk about you. What do you, what do you, let's talk about what you, what are you trying to get into? So I, <laughs> it's a couple of things. Um, I really want to learn how to direct music videos. Okay. Um, and but I also like I did what you said, create a podcast it. and it's a visionary's tale. Um, I've been trying to get guests on there, but with my dog, she's not helping me record. Um, but my like I also love getting to know people and their process behind their vision and everything, you know, and that's kind of what the podcast is about. But a couple things. First of all, yeah, don't sweat the dog situation. If you're saying that the dog is barking sometimes or bothering you, I actually think that makes your podcast more charming. <laughs> okay. I'm some real shit like, I think people okay. think production and yeah. underthink humanity. Yeah. I think, you know, think Hell about, yeah. You see where I'm going? Think about- I do. You know, like, people are starting to get to know each other better because they're, you know, my mom's curtains are in the background. Like people like love like real shit. So- Okay. And, don't listen. People always have excuses. You don't strike me as an excuse person, but it's subconscious. No. The dog is not fucking you up. Yeah, it's not. And like, I had all these questions prepared. Go ahead. Go ahead. And when I was trying to record, like, she was just growling at me, messing with the laptop. But hell yeah, I will you know just do it. <laughs> also, also, interviewing people that have made music videos, like, you should DM 4,000 people right now, celebrities. Yeah. Celebrities, influencers, tastemakers, athletes, rappers, culture, models, like everybody's responding to more DMs and more lives. They are, yeah. I actually did around. DM people. But I guess it's like, and I don't want to take up too much time. How exactly, like who is the target? Because I know you say start at the top and then work your way down. But for me, it's like I've been reaching out to local videographers that I want to get to know more of but should you take the chance and yeah. like Cole Bennett or yeah. Taj Stansberry? Cause Cole's a good kid and he might just be in a lyrical lemonade kind of mindset that moment. Yeah. Because there is no chance. Like that was a very important moment. Of course you should take the chance. You should take the chance to hit up for, yeah. you know, like, like, <laughs> what's going to happen? 
your feelings got hurt that Pharrell didn't see yeah. them. You know, the answer is, <laughs> there is no chance. You gotta reframe it. You can't. Yeah, definitely. You get a yes if you don't ask. Yeah, and like listening to your content, I stopped necessarily caring about shit. Yeah. Like, been posting my truth and my authentic self on Instagram and all platforms. I lost a lot of followers, but I have been engaging more with other people. And I think that shit's sick. So thank you, Gary. You're welcome. It's always depth over width. I'd rather have 837 people who give a fuck than 8,000 that don't. All right, man. Thank you so much, dude. I appreciate it. Got you. All right, let's be coming in with you. That was a really good question. Um, really good question. All right, mom. Special delivery. Hi. Hey, Annalie. Um, thanks for being here to answer my question. My question for you was, um, I'm a product designer and I'm looking at um, starting a business and I'm not sure if I should separate um, my business from my personal social media accounts and my blog. Um, I'm not sure people will be interested in what I'm selling or if it's going to be bothersome to them. Um, I think, I think that, I think that, so what is the, so one more time, your personal accounts, what is the business going to be? Um, so I'm looking to get into gift and novelty products. Love. And that's my passion. That's what I love. You're clearly going to make up account, social media accounts for that business, right? Yeah. And then what I would do is I would spur out things about um, that, you know, in your pro personal profile, but not make it all of the stuff. So for example, okay. I'm putting out all sorts of content all the time to bring value. Um, and what what I'm looking to do is, um, is really try to, uh, I'm sorry, I'm doing a private chat, so I'm testing some new stuff. Dustin, I thought I was private chatting you, but I'm private chatting Forella, so that's kind of interesting, so we need to figure that part out. So Annalie, um, the, the thing that you're, um, gonna do is what I kind of do with wine text, right? So I share my normal stuff, which is try to bring new value and everybody else. But once in a while for my dad's business, I'll post something and say, sign up for wine text. You're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna create an account for the business, but occasionally on your own personal, definitely the first day, like you're gonna pound all your personal accounts and say, hey, I've started this new business. It would mean the world to me if you could check it out and maybe even pick up something if you're interested. And then a week later, you're gonna say, man, this is tough doing this new thing. Here's my business. You know, So I think it's three to 30% of your content for the first you know, couple of months of its launch that will go really well. Okay, that's really helpful. Um, and then one other question is, I have a blog that kind of relates to the product that I'm hoping to sell. And I'm just wondering, should I leverage the blog and like have the product for sale on the blog or should I just completely rebuild the website for that? One more time, I apologize. I'm testing out a new platform and I just realized I have the live chat button. So Dennis Weber and Stove and Gonzalo, Henry Yu, I'm getting excited. So I apologize, Annalie, one more time. No, no worries. Um, so my question for you was, um, I have a blog that relates to kind of gift and novelty and DIY. And I thought I could use that as a platform to sell the product. Um, but I'm not sure if that's the right avenue to go or if I should just have a completely new website for the no, product. Definitely sell in that world because that's a very close correlation. And again, it's about jabs and right hooks, right? The reason I wrote that book is that you can give, 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 and then once in a while you ask. And there's nothing wrong for asking with business. What's wrong is manipulating people into buying shit, not yeah. asking after you've provided value. And the other vulnerability that people have is when they ask and, uh, and most people don't sign up for it or buy it, they get disappointed. They have expectations. They say, I've had this blog for a year. I've given you so much value. And why didn't any of you fuckers buy my stuff? And the reality is you can't have that expectation. You're asking, you're not demanding. So as long as you're comfortable with politely asking um, and dealing with however many you get, then you'll be super fine. Awesome, thank you so much. You're welcome, you're welcome Annalie. Take care of yourself. You too, thank you. Comments are coming in, I love this. Corey Kimball. So you're able to see like all these comments on the side? Yep. Good, awesome. Yeah, I can see them. Mitchell, I can't do anything with them. 
but I'm loving it. And I, it shows where it's coming from, right? So yeah. day on, on YouTube, you know, XYRBN on YouTube, uh, Hippie Picnic on Periscope. This is great. Paula Clark, what's good? Let's go. Bergen County, New Jersey. Nicole, what's up? Love this. Big shout out to everybody. There we go. Oh, no. Fiorella. We're going to keep working on it. We're going to help you. We're going to get you back on. I promise. We're going to keep trying. Um, Joey, what's good? How's it going? Super well. Where are you from? I'm from Chicago area, the suburbs. Love it. What's good, man? Okay. So um, over winter break, yep. I got like really into TikTok. And for like a month, I grinded on it. And I actually like I exploited a niche and like I gained a following. And over like the past month, I got like upwards of like, I got, I think I reached like 300,000, which was awesome. But then like recently, kind of like out of nowhere, it just like, I hit a plateau. It was like going up and then it just like stopped. You know, it started why? going down. And so. It's happening to a lot of people. You know why? Is it because the market's saturated or that's what I figured? Brother, this is why I was fucking yelling like a motherfucker 18 months ago. Of like, go, 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 go. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's like real estate. Let me give you the comp, Joey. It's like a part of Chicago suburb starts getting hot and it goes from kind of ghetto to going to rich area and you can buy up shit and the houses are 50,000 at first. And then when everybody fucking figures it out, all of a sudden, miraculously, the houses are 250,000. That's in money terms and real estate. That's what happens with attention on social networks. Yeah, I figured because like all the kids are coming back from college and they're just scrolling through social media all the time. And TikTok itself is just exploding, bro. Yeah, that's true. Okay. And uh, so, so like my, my original question was like, I kind of like just stick to my niche, I guess. And so- Do you love your niche? Like, what is your niche? So <laughs> my niche is, uh, it's like an eight-year-old kid figuring out stuff about the real world. Fucking love and it. So I like, I dress up like an eight-year-old kid. And then like, I kind of made like- you want to be an like, actor or a comedian when you get older? Um, now I'm what? honestly not sure. Like I'm a creative musical type person, Dude, but that, I honestly have no idea what I do with my life. So. That's a super creative concept. I fucking love that. So yeah, I, I'm like an eight-year-old kid figuring out about the real world. And then like I kind of gradually expanded it into like a niche about kind of like a family sitcom on TikTok. But the problem is, is that none of my videos are getting on the For You page for like the last two or three weeks. And I don't know whether I should like switch it up a little bit or I should just well, look. You can do both. Out content. I would probably do both. I would maintain that sitcom, okay. but I would become like a, I would become like Dave Chappelle. Like the Dave Chappelle show. Like that's one of the things. The next Okay, and then just okay, that makes sense. So now and you do like a little thing to kind of keep the audience going and then keep it intact. Okay, that makes sense. Right? Because now create another character, like the douchebag DJ. And do like exactly. and do that character and then create like literally, literally, literally SML the shit out of your channel. Just make a ton of characters, all this stuff, keep it going. If you have the creativity to create the eight year old, you probably have the creativity for four to five other things you know you can do. That mixes it is that mixes it up. It also makes us wait for I used to watch in Living Color just waiting for Homie the Clown and some weeks it wasn't on and some weeks it wasn't. I think that's where you can find your creativity. Including your sixth, you know, if you think about it, it's the eight-year-old, it's the DJ, it's the father, it's the, the old lady character, and then it's just actually you, Joey, and just like a video of like, yo, so this is how I've been thinking about my shit. Like you okay. could break the fourth wall, like you could do it all. You're in fucking control. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, beauty. All right, perfect. All right, my man. Thank you so You're much, welcome. man. You're Appreciate welcome. it. We're here to give tactics, give real fucking advice on Tea with Gary Vee. It's mindset and it's fucking execution. Clouds and dirt. If you don't have both, I, everybody's got fucking ideas. Nobody gives a fuck about it, your idea. Ideas are great and they're the way the world turns, but guess what? If you don't execute on your ideas, they're fucking dog shit. People hide behind ideas because they don't wanna fucking execute because they're scared to put themselves out there because they're fear-based because they're worried about other people's judgments and people literally fucking don't live their lives based on other people's opinions. And I've been put on this fucking earth to suffocate the fuck out of that conversation. Hey, Jess. Hi, Gary. How are you? I'm extremely well. How are you? I'm great. And I, I'm so thrilled because I don't even care if you don't answer my question. I have to tell you, you may have given my daughter some of the best advice she needed as a teenager because um, you were in Minnesota a couple summers ago and we came up to see you from Wisconsin. And she was like 15 at the time and I was kind of hoping, okay, well maybe Gary will inspire her with income or something like that, generating money. 
<laughs> and actually, you said to the audience, so what are you going to do? Are you going to give up on your happiness because you're too afraid of having a tough conversation with a mom, dad, grandparent? So instead, you're going to do what they want you to do instead of trying what you want to try. And she just like, I can't even tell you. She brings you up all the time. She literally, we were listening to you this week on Wednesday morning while we were making breakfast. And she's like, mom, when this thing's over, can we please go see Gary again? Like, we need to go here. I love that guy. So I hope you go out on the road again because we're going to come and find you somewhere. Thank you, Jess. You don't even know how nice that makes me feel. Yeah, it was seriously, I, I don't think you can possibly understand how important that message was for her in her life right now. I love it's, it. It's huge. So I love thank it. You. What, what can I answer for you? Okay, so I quit teaching about just under two years ago and decided to go all in on my content writing business and got really, really blessed, got some great retainer clients. And now in the past like nine to 10 months, I really started shifting towards copywriting and I okay. love it. And I'm really trying to master the craft, getting up early, practicing, doing all that kind of stuff. But now I'm seeing how I need to not just rely on referrals and word of mouth. I need to start building an audience. But then, of course, coronavirus has hit. And I'm just kind of like, I'm trying to master the craft. I'm trying to get new clients going online. And I'm just kind of struggling with what do I prioritize? Where do I spend my time? That kind of stuff. I think you spend your time on putting out um, sample work, um, engaging with people, starting a Facebook group of small business owners in the Minnesota suburb. What I think most people don't understand is that business is human and it's about humanity and people. And so I think the number one thing that you need to really think about is just building a community and getting people to know you. Like, you know, moms, moms dealing with this, you know, in a Facebook group and you get to know Sarah in Cleveland through it. And then when this is over or even later, when you get into like, what do you do? Like literally being the kind of person online that is really good at a cocktail party where you're not handing out your business card to everybody and trying to get everybody to just do business with you. You're just genuinely being human. Talking about the weather, talking about Corona, talking about sports, talking about getting back to real life, talking about kids and, and husbands and just being a human. And then inevitably in that conversation, it comes around to, by the way, what do you do? And so I think it's content and community, right? Putting out content, what kind of content? It could be a million things. You making a video of just why you decided to get into copywriting and just posting that on your Facebook and Instagram. If 87 people watch it, it begins the process. And then I think joining a ton of groups. I think one of the great things that people don't talk about is virtual networking starting up Google Hangups, Hangouts and Zooms and other things of that nature, just being the community leader, like literally posting on your Facebook right now, like do 10 people want to get, you know, a happy hour with me tonight and just shoot the shit, you know? And like, here, I'll send out the Google Hangout link. I, I think networking, just being a human is a huge factor. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Take care, Jess. Take care. It's fun. All right, um, Dustin, get on here. So everybody can see you, right? Yep. Okay, I love that. So that's a couple things. One, the comments that you've been flashing down here, I love that. Okay. The way to make them sit there longer or when you hit flash, that's how long they sit? No, they can sit for a while. It's just a- uh, I want to give people the clout and the exposure. And it's cool. fun, right? Like, yeah, you know, yeah, I like it. You know, I would have loved it if I was watching Randy the Macho Man Savage doing a live 20 years ago and he pinned my comment. So A, I want to do that. Okay. Um, B, a lot of people I see in the comments in the live stream are trying to figure out how this works. So A, um, uh, you can, if you see people putting up questions, I don't mind you throwing that up, not just nice comments. Okay. Like utility questions, not an actual question because that's what the people on the screen are for. Mm -hmm. uh, Team Gary, if you're watching this right now, which I know you are, in Periscope and YouTube, a lot of places, a lot of questions are like, what's the format? How do I get on the show? I wanna do a lot more community management in the streams, helping people. There's a, just a ton, a ton of questions, so let's do that. Um, I like the rotation that you're doing, you know, over by you on the Share This Live. I think that's super fucking rad. Um, I like the phone number. I like, so I like a nice healthy mix. I would say 30 seconds on the comments. You were doing about five before? Yeah, it was just more of like me just kind of experimenting, seeing. Yeah. 
Yeah, let's try, let's do, let me go to the next question. Just do five, 10, 15, and 20 second intervals of just all comments while I'm on. Let's see what that feels like. Cool. Awesome. Let's get this going. Okay, let's try it again. You got you it. You can hear me? Oh my gosh, third time's a charm. How's it going, Gary? How you doing? How's your Sunday going? Going well, how are you? Good, good, good. It's a little bit delayed, but that's okay. I'm. We'll work with it. 100%, what can I answer for you? So I am a wedding planner, perfect time to do that. I'm also in the middle of construction, which is where I am right now. Um, we were just scraping floors, so the flooring could come on Monday. But my question is not for me, it's actually for my entire community. Um, I live in a little town called Wisconsin Dells. Woohoo, shout out to my town. <laughs> we are a tourism capital of the, of the Midwest, um, known for water parks, big group conventions, um, day trippers, overnight stays. So right now we're taking a really big hit because all of my friends, everybody that I know, it, they're either a owner or they're employed by one. So I know social media can be a really big help. Matter of fact, the last networking event that I attended was a bunch of owners wondering how can they even get started with social media? And now they have plenty of time. So my question for you is, as a community, what can we do to have a campaign or something that can unify us because our customers are not here. Our customers are in Chicago, Minnesota, all over the state. So what can we do right now? So when this is all over, we can have a recovery plan. It's about building awareness to people that don't know about you and creating stickiness with the people that do. So things that run through my mind, if I'm a water park in the area, I'm thinking about, obviously I'm worried about my employees, I'm worried about myself, but what can I do for the community? Is there a donation I can do? Is there something nice I can do? Can I build up some temporary testing sessions? Like A, A, what can I do for the world? B, the next thing I'm thinking about is producing content around the stories of the reality of our place. So I would immediately go into story time, make three, four different videos about how my grandfather started it, you know, where we started it, what was the first breakthrough, the tough times, the, the good times, the bad times, legitimately stories. Um, then I would start doing also um, Zooms and record them with the 25, 50 employees or people in the community record them just shooting the shit and literally just take like an, our own conversation telling everybody we're recording this and we're gonna put it on YouTube. Literally it's about creating content to build awareness of the area because the reality is the core business is not going to I'm be- I'm not hearing you, but- You're not hearing me? No, I can't hear you anymore. I'm gonna give the answer and then we're gonna move on. I'm just, so the, the reality right now during this time is to tell stories, to get people to know about your place and so when your business is, when you're a restaurant right now or a convention center or anything affected so aggressively by this, a wedding planner, you know, right now is the time to story tell about you to the world. This is the time to set up an account on every platform and create content, content, content so that people are aware. So when this is over, you have a better chance of getting some of it back. Some things you just can't navigate through. They're, they're just ironclad. And right now what is ironclad is people are not going to large gatherings. And, and so if you look at what the NBA is doing, they're thinking about playing horse at home. They're, they're doing video game stuff. It's just about creating content during this time. Okay, so I hopefully I can watch the live so I can hear you, but thank you so much. You're welcome, bye-bye. Bye. I love this, big shout out to Susan Keeley, Seth Bieber, Carla Hendrickson, excuse me, all on Facebook right now. I'm loving this. Charles Clark, my man in the YouTube community. I appreciate you being here. Marcus J. Carey, what's good? What's up, Gary? How you doing? I'm well, what's your name? Mike. Mike, real pleasure. Yeah, 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 man. I've been I've been trying to talk to you for the last year, dude. Glad, glad I'm on. We made it. Where are you from? Yeah, yeah. Made it. Made it. Yeah, yeah. Dude, my friend Brad Smith used to play for the Jets. Um, um, Missouri, yeah. right? Go back in Missouri. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I was, at one point, I was like, yo, Brad, how can you get me in a, in a room with Gary? 
<laughs> number 16, he was a baller. Yeah. He uh, was yeah. a special team maniac in 2009, 10. Those That's runs right. he was instrumental to our success. Big shout out to Brad Smith. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Brad and I go to the same church, so he's, I see him all the time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. So here's my question. So, Gary, I am um, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm an educator. So I work at a school that uses adaptive learning software in, in place of direct instruction. So there's no math teacher. There's a math app, right? Science app. What that does is that shortens the school day, the, the academic portion to be only two hours and the rest of the day is spent learning life skills and doing like, like interest-based projects, right? So like we can do things that nobody else can do. Like mm -hmm. I actually taught a, um, a workshop to kids about how to flip sports cards on eBay. Right. Love so it. for six weeks, kids were like stealing stuff from their parents, flipping it on eBay. Right. The, the only like issue with the model is that that right now education like this is not sustainable for low income communities. So I'm trying to figure out like what is a revenue model or like a profit model, some business model that you think could make this how much is accessible? It right now, we're at thirteen thousand dollars a lost year. You, lost you. Oh, uh, can you hear me now? Gotcha. Gotcha. Go okay. ahead. Right now we're $13,000 a year and then $24,000 for high school. Oh, I actually, I'm back. I lost you. So, I mean, I could hear both of you, but it's kind of strange. It is strange. I, I'm, I, I can't hear you, but... Try again. I I can hear like uh it sounds breaking up. Yeah. Well, if the live feed can hear you, if you just answer. I'll check the live feed. It might it might be the ones whoever has the kids in the background. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Because then if there's like two different noises, it kind of like cancels the other person out. Um, barely. Let me see what I can do. Oops. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Yeah, yeah, there you are. Yeah. I you can, can hear, hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I can't hear you, Mike. Oh. Let me. New platform life. Dustin, you can hear me? Yeah, I could hear both of you. Fuck, I can't hear you. Can you hear me down here? Yeah, lost. <laughs> Yeah, I can I can hear a little bit. I can't really hear. Mike, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, yeah, I could hear Mike also. Yeah. One second. <laughs> Barely. So if you go on the bottom, go to cam mic and then go to audio. Yep, now I, now I can hear you. Hey, beautiful. Let's get Mike back on. All right, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so, how much is the cost? So, thirteen thousand uh, for K through eight, and then uh, I think twenty four thousand for high school. Per year. Per year. All right. So, look, you got to go into fundraising for scholarships. You got to go into corporate America and see if 
Chase Bank or or Salesforce. You gotta fucking grind. You gotta hit high right. net worth individuals, and you gotta and you gotta fucking people are getting crunk in the background. I love it. Like, <laughs> um, uh, you gotta go to high net worth. If look, if you can't drive down the cost, if you can't discount it to lower income, then you need to figure out how to go directly into uh, high net worth individuals and organizations and get scholarships or something that I think could work. When I think about an app, you can start thinking things like Cisco and SAP and Salesforce. You see where I'm going? All of a sudden I'm thinking, hmm, Mark Benioff's one of the best dudes on earth when it comes to entrepreneur and giving a fuck. Is, is his company capable of writing a $10 million check, which goes ham for a fuckload of kids, subsidizing through people who can afford it, around feeling good about themselves, looking for the clout, or corporate objectives. Real talk. Yeah, wow, okay, awesome, yeah, that's awesome, thank good you. Good luck, Thanks. talk to you soon. Can't wait to meet yeah. you in person. All right, I'm gonna be wrapping up here in a second. Uh, let's get, you got one more for me, Dustin? Ron or Williams, what's good? There, we got two in, two in the queue. All right, let's bang them out real fast. Okay. Hello. Hey, Tom, where are you from? I'm um, Toronto. Very nice to meet you. You too. Um, so good, just a quick question. Um, so my parents, um, the doctor, dentist, they forced me to go to dental school. I'm in my third year, so I'm almost done. So I can't really do it. Yes, and I can't do really do anything about it other than like finish and whatnot. Yeah. And um and yeah, so I really do hate it. Um, each day it's really hard and whatnot. So um, like even when I graduate, I'm not sure if I actually want to actually be a dentist. So you I'm don't. Kinda like, you don't. Yeah. Tom, listen sure. to me. Tom, mm -hmm. there is no way on earth that you can be a dentist. You fucking hate it. Mm -hmm. You're yes. going to be 36 yeah. years old and you're going to resent your parents for your whole life. You're going to resent them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of, which sucks. You, yeah. you, you already have underlining resentment towards them. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Yeah. And you, um, love your, you, love your, you love your parents. Yes, yes, I do. And my mom, she wants me to take over her dental practice because she is the owner of her own practice. So yeah, there's that complication too. So No. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. no. Tom, yeah. I won't let you. I will go to mm -hmm. Toronto and put you out of business and start my own dental practice if you do that. Oh, okay. okay. I won't, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. you're, Tom, you're gonna, be, you're gonna be sad. Yes, yeah, I know. Um, I'm already very like, sad. It's like yep. taking a- um... can, I, can I help you? Mm -hmm. Okay, number one, Tom, mm -hmm. you're not gonna be a dentist. Mm -hmm. I promise you, you will not. Mm -hmm. Number two, the next year and change of, how long are you in dental school for? Um, I have one more year, uh, but because of the coronavirus, yeah, it may, it may yeah. Mm -hmm. You're gonna treat that year differently than you treat it every other year. You're gonna enjoy yourself and it's gonna be your last vacation. Mm -hmm. You're gonna treat it as a vacation. You're gonna try to pass, of course, yeah. Yeah. but you're not gonna stress as much and you're gonna enjoy your downtime. You're gonna study a little less and mm -hmm. you're gonna have more fun. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna come out of school and you're gonna tell your parents you're not taking over the dental practice and they will be upset mm -hmm. and they will, mom will cry. Mm -hmm. Let me just get, hold on one second. Mom will cry, she'll cry. And dad or mom will be like, you're an idiot, you're bad mm -hmm. for 12 months, for 24 months, for 36 months. But you cannot be a dentist, Tom. It's the most obvious thing I've ever seen in my life. You hate it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's true. Um, yeah, I was, I was thinking like what I could do after. Like I really liked film and whatnot, but. So move to uh, California, mm -hmm. get a shitty job and mm -hmm. get into the game. Yeah, yeah, I, that's, that's what I was thinking of doing. Like that or like New York or something like that, yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. oh, Tom, listen to me, yeah. mm -hmm. listen to me. Cause I don't believe that you're gonna listen to me. I'm gonna keep you on a little longer. Listen to me. Mm -hmm upsetting your parents for a short period of time so that you can have love forever is much more fun than making them fake happy for a period of time and then hating them forever. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I, I know yeah, you said that um, numerous times before um, and I do understand, but- um, do, you I, want me to, do you want me to come with you? Do you want me to fly home with you? And when you no, tell your parents, uh, I will come. No, I will I'm, come with you. 
And I will hold your hand and we'll tell your parents we're not fucking gonna become dentists. Oh, like, my, my, my parents, no, I already told them, but they they're say, not listening. Like, they're like, yeah, exactly. Like the immigrant parent, um, like they're saying that like I'm being unrealistic. What else can I do and whatnot? Yeah, and so, yeah. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like mm-hmm. it. They're being selfish, Tom. They're mm-hmm. doing the wrong thing. They love you. Mm-hmm. Yes, but yes, they're being they se- but they're being selfish. Mm-hmm. They're wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tom, yeah. do you, do you want me to come with you and sit with your parents and drink some tea and tell them what's up? Uh, I, th- I think I'm okay though. Uh, thank you for the offer. Yeah. Do you, do you want to FaceTime me in when we start conversating and I'll sit there and give them a piece of my mind? Uh, 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 yeah, maybe sometime in the future. <laughs> okay, Tom. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Tom, listen to me. I, I, we're obviously playing around here a little bit. I know this is difficult. I know it's difficult, but I promise on all my heart. I promise. Mm-hmm. You can't become a dentist. It will be the worst decision of your life. Mm-hmm. I was thinking maybe I could do it like part time and then part time. No, 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 no. no. You're mm-hmm. not going to be a dentist. Oh, okay. the yeah. only reason you're going to do that is because you love your parents. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you respect your parents. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you to your beautiful young face, you're going to mm-hmm. end up hating them. Mm-hmm. No. Okay. Do you want to hate your parents? Uh, no, no, I don't. That's right. Mm-hmm. I know you don't. So mm-hmm. listen to me. You're on the verge of hating them because you're gonna blame them and resent them your whole life. You will, I, I don't know if I've ever seen somebody hate something more than I've seen you hate dentist. Mm-hmm. You fucking hate it. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I can feel it. I have good chemicals like that. Mm-hmm. You can't be a dentist. Mm-hmm. Yes. You can't, not part-time, not sometimes, not over the summer, nothing. Mm-hmm. It's over. Mm-hmm. Yes. Brother, you you can't do it. Yes, um, yeah. um. Your parents will love you, and I'm gonna tell you something very powerful, very Mm -hmm. powerful. Mm -hmm. Your parents will respect you more for not doing it Mm -hmm. than doing it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like that now. Mm -hmm. Listen. I'm from immigrant parents. I, mm-hmm. I live in immigrant circles. I know this isn't easy. I know that Americans and Canadians don't understand. It's a different culture. I know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you right now, I know so many 55 year old Toms that are doctors, lawyers, engineers, mm-hmm. and dentists, mm-hmm. and they are not in a good place. Mm-hmm. They're alcoholics, yeah. they're drug mm-hmm. users, they have no relationship with their parents. And, and if it's not those three things, they're just sad. And that's mm-hmm. the worst of the fucking four of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> you have to have courage to do this. Yeah, yeah, I do. Two to two to three bad years, mm-hmm. two to three bad years, and a lifetime of a good relationship with your parents mm-hmm. versus versus a lifetime of not a good relationship with your parents. Mm-hmm. Your parents are scared. They want you to be safe. Yep. They're they're over coddling you. Yes. Mama's gonna give you the business. It's yes. gonna be okay. You can get married and ha- I can have grandchildren. She's being sh- selfish. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, that's true. Mm-hmm. Tom, mm-hmm. if I fucking find out that you became a dentist, I swear to fucking God, I'm gonna go up to that dentistry and I'm gonna cause fucking havoc. Okay. Yes, yes, thank listen, you. Mm-hmm. Listen to me, Tom. Mm-hmm. T- you know my phone number, 212-9315. Yep. You're in Canada, right? I think yeah. it works in Canada. I think mm-hmm. it works in Canada. Listen to me, listen to me, use me. Mm-hmm. I, I, I do not believe that we accomplished you not being a dentist here. I think we're gonna we're gonna hang up okay. and you're and you're and you're still gonna be a part-time dentist and I don't like that feeling right now. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> I don't want that for you, brother. You're mm-hmm. gonna resent them, you're gonna be unhappy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Yeah. Do me a favor, rewatch this video every day. Yep. I will do. <laughs> Start editing start playing, start reaching out, start DMing people that make content in LA. Mm-hmm. If you need help, I know a lot of directors and producers in LA, I will help you. Oh, thank you. Tom, are you gonna be a part-time dentist? Um, Tell I, me the truth, Tom. Uh, I don't, I know that I need, I was, uh, initially I was thinking part-time dentist and then part-time like exploring film and my hobbies. You know? my interests and whatnot. 
Um, so that's something to like um, pay for the bills and whatnot. Um, but uh, it, but yeah, I'm a bit unsure at the moment. But um, I do agree with you. I, I have thought about like not becoming a dentist after and just dropping it. But then um, it's like my mind's all over the place. Sometimes I would say be a part-time dentist. Sometimes I would say just drop it completely and pursue film. And it's like, yeah, it's a bit, and it's also parental pressures and it went on, but yeah. Listen to me, mm. money is not success. Happiness is success. Mm -hmm. Yes. You, ha you have to, have to, have to, have to, have to go to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. get a shitty job in entertainment. Mm -hmm start networking in that world. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, I would be so proud of you if you were a receptionist or an assistant or an intern of the intern in Hollywood more than fucking getting a job as a fucking dentist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know that I, this is more like, I know because um, I'm Canadian and due to visa stuff, I need like a job offer before, but that's like- Good news, good news, Tom. Mm -hmm. Toronto and Vancouver film. Yes. Filled, exactly, yeah. filled with fucking jobs. Yeah, Toronto has a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Vancouver, and it's fucking nice out there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where exactly. do your parents? Where do your parents live? Uh, we live in um, Toronto, or like in the in the um, Toronto suburbs. Area. Yeah. Okay, Tom, you need to go to Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Like yeah, escape from. You. <laughs> you need to go to Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Okay, I would do that. Hold on one second. Hey, Brandon. Yeah. I'll call you right back on Wine Text. Oh. I'm I'm sitting here. Fixing Tom from Toronto's life on live stream. Got it. You got it. We're telling him not to be a Brandon. Can you can you please tell him not to be a dentist? Uh, okay, don't be a dentist. Do you hear that, Tom? This is my best friend Brandon, yeah. who's known me since Brandon. You've known me since I was fourteen. Tell Tom how often I'm right. He's he's pretty much right ninety nine point eight percent of the time. <laughs> Usually more, actually. And Tom, this is not the point two percent of the time. <laughs> I love you, Brandon. I'll call you back. Tom, yes. you're going to Vancouver mm -hmm. and you're schlepping around lighting or doing some dog shit thing and you're going to be the happiest fucker ever mm -hmm. or you're going to stay in Toronto and fucking be miserable. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome, Tom. Fuck, I think everybody just fell in love with Tom. Whew. Man, that wasn't... I mean, Blake, how the fuck are you going to follow that? I know, right? Except, you know, we tried to push our kids to be dentists, but uh, they didn't. So <laughs> good. You're joking, or please tell me that's the truth. Yeah, that's the truth, yeah. Oh, yeah. my God, Blake, that's fucking amazing. <laughs> oh, I love this shit. The, yeah. Did you hear my rant, Mom? The next guy on? Goes, we tried to push our kids to be dentists. <laughs> That's awesome, Blake. But they didn't listen to you. No, they didn't listen. We didn't push too hard, but uh, my wife had a, lot of, had a lot of clients that were dentists, and we were like, yeah, these guys are killing it. And so we're thinking, we want our kids to be dentists, you know, but no, I respect we didn't that. push them too hard. I get it. I get it. How are you? What can I help you with? Well, man, we're in a, uh, I started my company in 2013. We're a home inspection company. We've grown to 39 employees. And we're just killing it every year. We were first quarter, we were up 54% year over year. And of course now with this lockdown, you know, everything's just gone to shit. We can still work, but uh, you know, people are just not buying houses. They're sitting on the sidelines. Of course. And so we pivoted. What's that? I said, of course, that makes sense. Yeah. So we kind of pivoted. So we did some research and we came up with a decontamination service where we can go in and decontaminate houses before people move in. And so that's that's helping to bring in a little bit of revenue. Um, but now I'm just trying to grab market share. And I love your mindset of uh, abundance. And, um, you know, we try to keep that. But we're just trying to figure out the best way to grab market share now, even though it's not going to generate revenue. So 90 percent of our referrals come from realtors. And uh, so that's who we work with. So I just wanted to have you started. Where's your business? Where are you based? Uh, we're in Dallas, Fort Worth and Austin. I love it. So I would start a small business or even a real estate uh, Facebook group immediately. I would 
post on all your social networks, whether personal or for the business, that you're hosting Zoom and Google Hangout sessions every night, happy hours to have businesses become the host of the party, of the discussion in real estate agents, real estate insurance brokers, um, you know, banks, uh, entrepreneurs, become the mayor of your town virtually, become the Pied Piper that hosts virtual happy hours and parties every night. People will become aware of you. It's networking. There's 50 people on the screen just talking shit. You're the fucking head of the table. Okay, Rick, what do you got? Where are you from? Become become the Pied Piper. Become the host every night, Blake. I'm not kidding. Immediately. This Monday, 7 p.m. On, on this link on Google, I'm hosting a party for all real estate agents, you know, construction, you know, developers. We're just gonna shoot the shit for, for Dallas area, you know, real estate professionals. Uh, bring your bottle of wine, bring a beer, bring a cocktail, bring a coffee. We're gonna just shoot the fucking shit. And that to me, I guess Blake didn't like the advice. Blake, you didn't like that? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Blake? He's still there, but I'm not sure. I say, Sorry. <laughs> that's okay, Blake. Fine. Yeah. No worries, brother. No, that sounds awesome. Become the host of the party. Yeah, it will work. It conference. will work because you're going to build awareness. Yeah, we've done some Zoom conferences, but I hadn't thought about just doing the hangouts every night. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Every night, you know, seven to nine p.m. You know, Dallas or Texas, name it. Texas real estate professionals, you know, happy hours, and just be the host and make it invite only. People have to hit you up and. You got to approve them. It could be a whole fucking thing. Throw the party. It's the high school party rule. Whoever had the house to throw the party became cooler in high school. Your way of becoming cooler is that. Do you understand? Gotcha. Yeah. I and, got you, it. and you don't even and you don't even need your parents to go away for the weekend. It's called fucking Google Hangouts and Zoom. <laughs> All right, man. That's All right, man. great. I Talk to you it. soon. Right. Thank you. All right. I'm getting out of here. I really appreciate everybody. YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, Twitter, LinkedIn. I appreciate all of you. Uh, Dustin, get in here for a second. Oops. Sorry. Hello. Pretty, pretty good format. What were you seeing? Uh, a lot. <laughs> um, I was trying to keep track of the comments, but they, they're going by so fast that it's... Sure. Yeah. And then at the same time, just having the people coming I don't, in. I don't see LinkedIn comments on the comments. Let me take a look. Was it streaming on LinkedIn? It was. Um, yeah, I don't see them coming in either. So I'll, I'll double check on that after the stream's over. Okay, let's go into the Team Gary group and let's uh, let's figure this out. Cool. Anyway, thank you everybody watching tomorrow. Oh, uh, Tea with Gary B. Looking forward to it. Set your uh, RSVPs. We'll put it out right now on all our social. Uh, set your alarms. Get in here with us. Tomorrow, Tea with Gary V, 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. on the West Coast. Get up. Get up and get at it. We'll see you tomorrow. Love you. Bye.